Hello, it's another beautiful day here at the caravan and I'm down here to have a little look at the roof vent in the middle of the caravan which was dripping a little bit during some of the last rains that we've had so I'm going to remove it, strip it down, clean it up uh, and actually remove the framework as well and change the mastic so I'm going to take you along for the ride so you can see how I do it Alright, let's get on with it So as you can see, the roof vent is not only sort of quite filthy um, and this is, you've got the two panels here and it's filthy underneath. Um, I think it's actually leaking from where this handle joins up here. And if I just push that, you can see there's a bit of a gap developing there, which isn't surprising, but I don't know. It, it, it does leak. It's not bad, to be honest with you, it, but it does leak. So um, I'm gonna have a go, strip it down, clean it all up. I'm gonna remove the framework as well because I wanna change the mast stick. There's going to be a solar panel going somewhere on the roof uh, under the, on this side somewhere. So once that's up, it's going to be more awkward to do this, which is why I'm doing it today. So first job, uh, there's a couple of screws here and here and the same on the other side, which I believe are torque screws. So I'm going to get those out and then that should allow the, the top hatch to come away. So we'll see what we've got after that. They look to me to be normal Phillips screws. So I'm going to change to a Phillips screwdriver instead. Yeah, well, I was right, they are little tiny Phillips screws, I don't know if you can see that. Find a little bowl, put them in before I lose them. Okay, put all the screws out. So now, in theory, these alarms just pull off, like so. And then that is the whole thing. Oh, simple. Not too bad at all. That's got the whole roof end off. And I can see in the past someone's made a repair to this. It's just got some sort of mastic on here. Actually, looks like it's being cracked at some point, possibly. Actually, yeah, you can see where the water's coming in. So if I just turn this around and I point that down there, I like press down there. You see that opening up? It's got a bit of separation. So obviously, just through use, that's now separated. So I'll have to make a little repair to that. Same on this side. You see the opening up just a smidge. So that's kind of changed what I was going to do today actually because I was just going to give it a clean out. But really I could do with a little bit of a fiberglass kit to repair that. Maybe, let's have a look and see what the roof's like up top, see whether I need to take the frame out as well. I am tempted to say that I will. Let's have a look. But the frame is quite manky. Mm. Okay. What to do first? <laughs> what to do first? Why don't we clean up these bits here where the screw holes were? See if I can actually separate the two out. See if I can get this repaired first before I touch the frame because at least I can put something over the top of here to secure it. It's not due to rain overnight, but this is Wales and things can turn pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, but I could always go and buy a fiberglass kit and try and do that this afternoon as well. It's currently just after two o'clock, so if I need to go to the shops, I've got until five to do so. 
the shops are about a 30 minute ish drive from here so I'll have to be yeah I'll have to be pretty prompt about doing that but um, let's see what we can do with this anyway okay let's try and chip away some of this old stuff here try and bring you a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing I'm not sure what it is that they put on here but it's pretty hard see the separation there really well actually maybe it's the sort of thing that will come up better as a photograph but you can see I'd actually probably get my fingernail in there yeah, can see how that goes in there so yeah this this plastic is separated so that needs repairing The other issue that I have here at the moment is that I have no electricity so I've only got my battery operated um, impact driver. It would be quite handy to have the Dremel because I could use the, the little whirling grinding disc to try and take some of these down but uh, without taking it back uh, to somewhere with electricity that's not going to be an option so I'm going to have to just persevere with chiseling away the screwdriver on it so we'll, we'll see how we get on. Okay, I think I might take it back to somewhere with electricity, go back to the in-laws <laughs> and use their electricity. As you can see here, as I've been doing some work in it, that's starting to open up now. So I might jump in the van, take this with me, go get a fiberglass kit, um, which I'm going to need anyway to, to try and shore this bracket system up, the, the mountings here. Um, take it all apart there, clean it, strip it, bring it back, refit it, and depending on time, I might remove the framework today, or I might wait until tomorrow to do that. Um, just because I don't want the risk leaving this out overnight and be running short on time. So, uh, to the DIY store. Okay, I'm back and I've been to the DIY store. I've got some bits and pieces now, I'm in the shed. So, what I've found is a glass fiber kit which will help me to reinforce uh, you know, where, the, where the fixing points are here. I've also bought some uh, six mil penny washers, which I'm gonna to use again to reinforce around here, and some six mil sort of posi head machine screw nuts, that kind of thing. Now, funnily enough, after I left the camera, after I turned it off, this actually came out. So these little nubules that I thought were mastic or some sort of adhesive or, or something that had been put on previously, are actually original parts so it's part of the plastic that they obviously they, they push this through and then they must kind of melt it down I'm guessing so when I was trying to uh, <laughs> to remove that thinking there's a, a screw or something underneath uh, I, I was obviously getting nowhere but um, I should have known I should have looked in the other side well of course there's nothing there so there wouldn't be a screw but never mind you live and learn you live and learn so I think the plan of attack is I'm going to nip these off uh, flush with the top of here, drill them out to 6mm uh, so that I can then use one of the screws. Once I've got it all off it up and tested I'll split this apart, make sure it's um, get it all cleaned up and then I'm going to reinforce everything, fiberglass it and I think I've, I think I've got a plan. Um, I, I've got some sort of plan going on in my head but I can't really describe what it is yet until we actually get going. So let's see how this goes. Right. Oh, it's incredibly soft. Nearly had my finger. <laughs> or my thumb, rather. <laughs> Lovely. So that's those two removed. You're just gently, really gently, pulling that through. Um, that one's not coming on that side, so I'll just dremel that side a little bit.
Excellent. So I reckon when they manufacture these, they must obviously manufacture them with the little nubbins on, push it through and then melt them down with some sort of hot iron once they are on with the, the skylight. But obviously over time they just leak and seep and... Well, that's not where it's leaking. In fairness to the nubbins, you might be able to see more clearly where it's leaking. Just there, around the edges. I don't know if you can see the light coming through or not, but... Anyway, come to that in just a second. Let's get these cleaned up. Okay, doggy, so nice and flush now. So next stop, let's drill them out to 8mm. Did I say 8mm before? I definitely meant 6mm. I hope I meant 6mm. Because that's the size of the, <laughs> the screws I bought, so 6mm. So now we'll just double check these screws are actually going to go through here. Okay, so we've got these two tidied up now. Uh, they're looking much better than what they were. So, the next job is to grind down a couple of these penny washers so they actually go inside. There's not much to go off on, the, to, on either side of them, but to take a bit off so I can slide them in. That one, because it doesn't quite match up with the hole, that'll have to be more off on one side than off on the other, if that makes sense. You can see from there the sort of the profile I need to achieve. Actually, I might just mark that up. Maybe we'll find a pen. Okay, so I've managed to grind down some penny washers so that they sit inside there, which will give that little bit more support uh, when we screw these down in from the above. Possibly didn't need to do it, but I thought, well, I don't want to go too crazy uh, on this plastic because it's so fragile. But we'll see how we get on with those. Next job. Right, next stop is to try and get this cleaned up. It feels like it should come apart into two pieces. And I've looked on the internet and other people have come apart in two pieces, but this sort of feels a bit glued. I'm going to very gently try and do that. I've tried hosing it out, but it's not going to be any good. I think this is being glued at some point. <clears throat> well, hey, as you can see, it's pretty filthy. I'll go get a scrub. Good morning, we're back at the caravan. I overran a bit last night with the repair, so we chanced just having the roof open overnight. 
fortunately it was a dry night, we had no rain whatsoever, and so everything's fine inside the caravan. Um, looking at the skylight, you can see where I left off yesterday, we did the, the fiberglass work, just try and get in there, put a little bit more light on it, it might be a bit easier to see. So that's the fiberglass. I've also drilled out the holes ready to take the bolts through. And you can see that there. If you were looking for a masterclass on how to fiberglass, um, you've come to the wrong place. <laughs> I'm certainly not a, a master in doing this, but it's come out all right, so I'm quite happy. It should certainly have reinforced this area here, which is where it's cracking and where it's leaking through. So in terms of that, fingers crossed it will be a success. So now it's just a matter of uh, reconstructing it, making sure it goes back in the gap. And then I would also like to take down this frame today, and I also want to remastic around the outside. So a few little jobs today, so um, let's get going. Let's put the handles back on here, first of all, and we'll offer it up and see how it fits. So the plan is, as you know, we're going to use these bolts to go through. Uh, which will then replace the little plastic nobules that were there originally to try and help them to, to get a bit of a better purchase on top of here and to prevent it being uh, the force being so localized on the, where the hole is I've got these foam backed washers which came off these roofing screws so I'm hoping that that will help not only seal the hole up I'm going to put a little bit of squidge on it anyway this mastic you know this seam seal stuff uh, to help that but I'm also going to use these foam back washers and that should hopefully just spread the load a bit and make sure it doesn't pull through That's it. now then let's just try and get so one slight miscalculation is I haven't left myself quite enough thread on the end of the screw. It's just going to make this tricky. With putting the foam washers on now, it has taken up some of the spare thread that I had left. Super, so that's side number one done. You can see the two bolts through there. And from the underside, you can just about see it there as well. We got them in there. So I'll do this side now. <coughs> if I was doing this again, I'd probably be tempted to have glued in the washers into here and here, which would make reassembly a bit easier. But too late now. You saw me grinding those down yesterday. Is that little fit in there? because the hole's not centralised, so hence why I had to grind them down yesterday on the grinding wheel. I could have bought a whole new roof light for about £65 with the postage added on. Um, I just, you know, I just kind of felt... <sighs> it's a lot of money, and this repair's cost me, I don't know, a couple of hours of time and maybe about 15 quid in materials. So I just kind of felt at that kind of price point, it's just worth doing. And it's not, I mean, it's on the roof for goodness sake. Nobody's going to see it unless you're flying a drone over or something like that. But no one's going to see it. So to me, I don't really see the point of spending mega bucks on a replacement skylight. If it was a, a, a transparent one, then perhaps I would have been more inclined to make the repair a little nicer. But you can't see out of it anyway. And I really don't see the point of buying a whole brand new one when a simple repair, although crude, I'll grant you know I'll grant anybody who's going to claim that it's quite a crude repair. I'll say yeah, fair enough. But I really don't see the point of spending sixty-five pounds on a new one. I'm just carefully not making sure I tighten down these nuts too much because I don't want to knacker the plastic or the repair work, because fiberglass, although it's great, it is quite brittle. I've been careful, I've been tightening them enough, but not too much. And there we go. 
So yeah, let me just clean my hands up and I'll show you the finished job. I'm just going to clear where I've messed here. This is just a bit of white spirit on top of uh, an old rag. And just where I've spilt a bit. But that doesn't, I'm quite pleased with this really. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. So here's your choice. You can spend £65 on the new one, uh, which will be a direct replacement. Or you can spend 8 quid, 10 quid on a fiberglass kit and repair it yourself. So there we are. I'm quite pleased with that. And it's also been cleaned, <laughs> which, which was desperately needing doing. Desperately need, needing doing. Lovely. Let's offer it back up and see if it fits. Aha! Right, okay. <laughs> I've discovered the trick. I'll show you this side. So, squeeze in from this way. Pop that one on. And then pinch and squeeze. For a little spring, it's got some go. Ah. Doing. Try again. Ah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Right, I might just screw this side in first before it pops off. Two seconds. Happy with that. That's catching now. happy with that. Caught a little bit on the way down but possibly moved the brackets ever so slightly on here but it's working. Happy happy days. Right time check. I'm gonna have a look at getting this frame out and I want to reseal all around here. So that will be our next job. Ironically, I'm going to take this off again. <laughs> well, before I do, it's probably just worth mentioning, the trick is to try and squeeze these two arms in together at the same time and to orientate these little arms here so that they're sort of just in line. And I think once you get one or two in, pop the screws in because it stops them from jumping off would be my top tip on that one. Right. Super. So now we're going to move on to removing the bracket and surround so I can clean the roof up and reseal it. Whee! Yes, that's pretty minging. Pretty minging. Not going to lie, concerns me somewhat doesn't seem to have much of a hold on that. <laughs> Let's have a look up here. Oh, mind you, it's lifting the roof material, so that's okay. So there's obviously some mastic underneath that. Right, forgot to bring a scraper. Got an egg slice. Egg slice? Fish slice instead. <laughs> oh, don't tell Stace. In fairness, the mastic seems to still have quite a good hold. It could even be a waste of time doing this. Do you know what? Let's do it anyway. I'm up here. Let's do it. Because once the solar panel's on, it won't be that easy to do. <laughs> Saying that with a little bit of application of the white spirit, it's coming off quite easily. It suggests to me it's quite old. Wouldn't be surprising actually if it was the original Caravan Mastic.
Okay, so now we're going to have to remove all the old mastic. For that I'm going to use a combination of the, the white spirit that's rubbing down and also an old blade that I've got in here. It's just a matter of scraping it off. Fairness to the mastic, it's done its job, there's no damp on the inside of the timber works. But as I'm getting to this point anyway, I always think it's worth just doing it. And you know it's done. Right, I'm back. So as you can see now, I've removed all the mastic from around the top here, but what I do want to do now is give it a really good scrub, get the last bits of remaining mastic off. Uh, before I clean up with methylated spirits ready for reinstallation. So I've got to, an old scouring sponge and some paper towel to try and keep everything a bit tidier. Fortunately, this is a messy job, however, you do it. Okay, so that's everything done up on the roof for the time being. I've cleaned off all the mastic. You saw me doing that there before. You can see it's now nice and clean. I also use a little bit of this flash product to just clean up some of the old moss and lichen stains that are on the roof. It seems to do quite well. Um, anyway, but we're going to move on to cleaning this up now. As you can see, I'll have to remove all this old mastic that's around the edge. And that's just a, a real laborious task of with a screwdriver and a bit of white spirit, cleaning it all off and trying to make as little mess as possible. So uh, let's do that now. Hey folks, I'm back. I just nipped over to have some lunch. And whilst I was there, I actually took the surrounds with me. You remember these were absolutely pretty filthy before. And what I did when I, when, I, when I went over for lunch is I used the in-laws pressure washer to get them all cleaned up. I thought it'd be the easiest way of doing that really. So they're still a bit wet in places, but I'll give them a bit of chance to dry in the sun. But all the nooks and crannies, with obviously with the pressure washer, they could get in uh, and get those cleaned really nicely. So I want to get those really dry because once it's sealed up, it's sealed up and I don't want the moisture hanging around in there. You can also, I don't know if you can see there, <laughs> this plastic is it's, it's a strange sort of thing. It's like a melamine. And then when you hit it with a pressure washer or, or even just scratch with your, your fingernail, the upper surface comes away. And what you can see left here is like a pitting. So I don't think it's going to cause any issues. I'm not too worried about it. If I was, I could sand it and, and all that kind of jazz, but I'm not going to worry. So uh, next little job is to get those out in the sun to dry. And then up here, I want to get all that cleaned off with methylated spirits. So it's got the best possible adhesion. Lay out the mastic around the outside. Uh, probably going to cut it as well. Can you cut it as well so it overlaps? No, I won't. I'm just going to lay it on the top surface. So lay it on the top surface all the way around. And then it should just be, in theory, a matter of bringing that down through the surface, uh, through the opening here, sorry to uh, install it and then screw it all back together and then replace the roof light and that'll be another little job done. Hello everyone, I've switched to recording this as a voiceover as the audio on this particular section was very, very poor. In my hands I've got a roll of 50mm mastic tape. It's incredibly wide for the job that we're doing here today, but as I had it left over from the caravan project last year, I figured it would be worth using it for this. So here I am just stretching it out around the aperture in the roof of the caravan. When you come to cut mastic tape with scissors, it's a good idea to wet the blades of the scissors with some white spirit. To do this, I just applied a little bit to some kitchen paper and then wiped the blades. It really helps to cut through the mastic tape easily with scissors 
and it stopped the mastic from sticking to the scissors. When working with mastic tape and you're joining two bits of tape together, peel back the paper and just press with your fingers the two edges together to form a permanent seal all the way around the outside. And luckily for me, the mastic tape that I had left wasn't quite long enough to go all the way around the aperture of the caravan. And as you can see in the image, I have a small gap left at the far end. To bridge the gap that was left, I had some Hodgson seam seal sealant which came in a tube and you could squeeze out using a mastic gun. But I'll show you that in the next clip. And good news, the better audio returns. Okay, so just before I put the surround in place, um, obviously I've got to put this other mastic on where there's a little gap here, which is annoying, but that's as it goes. I'm just going to go around the Stanley blade and just trim off any bits that are overhanging, because what I don't want to do is snag the surround when I bring it down, because it here is overhanging the bits, so I'm just going to go around the Stanley. And like the scissors before, I'm just going to wet the blade with just a little bit of white spirit to help me glide through. So next job then is I want to apply this mastic sealant here. I'm also just going to peel back this paper in readiness. There we are. Like I said before as well, because it's a warm day, the mastic is even tackier. rolling about the roof. Okay. Come as no surprise to you people who watched the channel before that my mastic application is about as good as my silicone sealant application. <laughs> right. right. I'm not sure whether this is a good idea or not, but I'm going to use the roll the mastic came on just to try and smooth this down just a smidge. In theory, shouldn't stick to it too badly, <laughs> but it does. There we go. Just flattened it out, just a touch, just a touch. I can clean up any excess with some white spirit anyway at the end, so I want to remove the tape from all around the mastic. That keeps worrying me, because I keep thinking the mastic's lifting, but it's not, it's the roof. <laughs> it's the, uh, the metal on the roof. Uh, funny. There we go, that's that one done. Pop it down there. Cool, right. Pop back down. And now, the main event. Just want to make sure these are the right way around, which they are. And let's see what we can do with this then. Hopefully, it'll go on without too much drama. I think. Oh, that's, I'm all right. I'm happy with that. Try and compress it on all the way round. I think it's time to go back inside the caravan now and do the finishing off bits inside. Screw the inside bit, and then before I actually put the lid on, I'll come round and just tidy this up with a knife. pinch down nicely. So the only thing left to do to finish off is just to clip the roof in. Or clip the skylight in. Oh, and I also want to tidy up the mastic, so let's go up and do that first. Okay, so we're going to try and get all this extra sealant that's around the outside, the excess trimmed off. Having a few issues with the GoPro today it keeps overheating, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> but there we are, challenges. So again, I'm just going to wet the blade of the knife just to make it slide through a lot easier. Missed. 
Right, so I've just cleaned away the excess mastic from around here. And the reason for doing that is it just makes it look a lot tidier. And it also stops all the grime and gunge sticking to it and making it look rather unpleasant. This bit here where I put the sort of more liquidy mastic from the, from the gun, I uh, just cleaned up as best I could with dry paper and then just rubbed it over very gently with a little bit of wet with, uh, towel with white spirit on. Just, uh, just enough to clean off the surfaces. But I am quite happy with that finish. I'm pleased with that. It looks all right. So, the final thing is to put on the skylight and then we are done. And the boss has turned up, you see, so I've got to make it look like I'm doing work. <laughs> She, she thinks I forget these things all the time. Anyway, right, let's get the skylight back on. Okay, so let's see if we can get this skylight on quicker and simpler than it, I did the first time. Oh yes. Lovely. This little side's in. Okay, remember your tip from last time, pop the screws in. Helps them stay in place. That went on a lot easier that time compared to last. Perfect. Let's test it. Oh, yes. All done. And I know it looks a little bit messy and it's a little bit sort of rustic, shall we say, the finish of it, but it's not like someone's going to be flying a drone over the top of the caravan really paying attention to it, is it? 